Hey uh, folks, Quilly Dean here and welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday live stream. And I have declared this week to be ARPG week, uh, apparently, because that's that's the way things are shaping up. Ooh, my hair's a little, uh, little Albert Einstein in that one photo. I don't know why it's a little crazy today, but it is, and that's okay. Hi, everybody! Yeah, between like, you know, last epoch's 9.0 patch or 0.90 patch being released and the sandwiching of Diablo beta test weekends last weekend, this upcoming weekend, the RPGs are on my mind. Like, you know what? I'll just commit to that, doing that today on stream. Also, Kiss for Luck is going to be playing Last Epoch again. I'm going to be joining her again for some more multiplayer after I'm done over here. So that's what we're going to do. And yeah, on Saturday, um, we're going to see exactly what, how maybe the stream will get split or whatever. But um, a lot of people have expressed interest that they'd like to see some Diablo 4 on stream. So with the new, the, the second round of Diablo 4 beta, um, we'll, uh, we'll probably do some streaming of that on Saturday. Maybe mixed in with Dwarf Fortress, maybe not. We'll have to play that one by ear and see how it goes. Uh, but, I mean, it is a limited time thing. It does feel like I should, we should probably take, take the time to cover it and see what it's like. What if my characters can get reset? Not the end of the world if they do, but yeah, we'll see how that shakes out. Do, do, do. Enjoyed your 22 levels of Diablo 4 quite a bit, honestly. Chain Lightning, too fun. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed my my Sorcerer run um, with the Chain Lightning the most. I did a little bit with uh, two of the other characters there, but the Sorcerer was the Chain Lightning was the one I was having the most fun on. I've heard that the uh, Druid and or the Necromancer will be live this upcoming weekend, because they weren't last weekend, and we might be able to um, check those out. Not reset from last weekend, but it will be reset this weekend before it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Druid for sure, not sure about Necker. Okay. Um, which is fine, because I I tend to like to play Druid characters in a lot of ARPGs. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. You like the Barbarian? Yeah, a thing is, even though... Even though, in a sense, the Barbarian's rage is the same as energy or mana, but it's sort of just working in reverse, it always feels very awkward to me. Like, I like to open the battle with, like, the big attack. Not like, okay, I gotta hit a few times to build up some rage and then use the big attack. Um, but I, admittedly, I didn't go very deeply in Barbarian. But it was the same thing. I never I never really played Barb in D2 or D3 either. <laughs> Both classes will be in this beta. Confirmed beta message they released last weekend. Okay. Well, then maybe we play Necro just because we're currently playing a sort of Necromancer-type character here in Grim Dawn, and at least in the last epoch, I'm playing with a Kiss for Luck and playing a Necromancer in there. Uh, so we could, we could just compare and contrast all the Necro classes at the same time. Um, we I was excited about Pharaoh. The Steam reviews weren't great when it came out. We'll take another look at it, maybe. Uh, I'm gonna check to see if it's got any patches or update or anything that may have tweaked things. Um, I am, I'm still tempted to check out uh, Pharaoh, but at this time, I don't have a, uh, a date for it, so we'll see. Awkwardness with Barb was using the upheaval to open the battle and face planting into a not enough rage wall. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get started. So, we played this on Monday. It's the same character. So, this is my character named Making My Own Friends. We are currently a level 24 ritualist. Now, ritualist is what happens when you are both a necromancer and a shaman. As, as you may around or not in Grim Dawn, you pick two classes and your your build ends up being a combination of the two. I haven't really done anything with Shaman yet. I did put one point in it just to lock it in because that's what this character is gonna be. Right now we're focusing on the Necromancer side. Um, a couple of things have been tweaked since the end of last episode. First of all, we ended last episode, we were level 20. What I did here is I went and did uh, a few more runs at the um, the cave that's that's over here, the, the locked sort of fortress dungeon, uh, where we fight um, Salazar or whatever his name is, um, that has a drop that's actually quite good if you are playing a pet class. Except I had uh, I had misremembered something. Um, it, it took me six runs. I finally did get one to drop. Um, and yeah, so right over here, Salazar Sovereign Blade is one of the. I always they're monster and frequents. I often call them monster intrinsics, which to me is like almost made her a, a better name. It's like an intrinsic item linked to a particular type of monster. So that um, that Salazar guy, if you kill him, he can drop the Salazar Sovereign Blade, which does have a random prefix and suffix here. Um, and the big thing is it gives you a skill, Call Forth the Harbinger, which is a pet skill, has a 56 second recharge, it's a pet that lives for 25 seconds. So basically you have 50% uptime with this. So you get a whole other pet, which is really good. Um, what I had forgotten about, uh, I thought for some reason that, like, because it also has plus two to summon Hellhounds and plus two to summon Familiar, I had misremembered this. I had thought that this gave pluses to the Shaman pet, 
um, and not just the occultist pet. So it's it's not of. It, I don't think it's worth using for us on our character. Maybe if it had dropped with a prefix or suffix that buffed pets, then perhaps, but it didn't. Um, just decaying of decay, so it's like extra vitality damage, which wasn't useful for us. Um, so I don't know if it's worth using this weapon just to have the extra pet summon. And I kind of feel like the answer might be no, unfortunately. So I feel a little bit dumb about having done that. On the other hand, um, I had collected a few items. I got multiple copies of the Bloodsworn Codex here, which the Bloodsworn Codex base monster infrequent, or intrinsic, um, gives you plus two to summon Briar Thorn, as well as plus two Ground Slam, which I think is a Briar Thorn ability. Um, and then, yeah, the cooldown reduction for Summon Briar Thorn and total damage 30% for Summon Briar Thorn. That's built into the uh, Bloodsworn Codex. The Of Binding Suffix that I got on here gives us plus two to raise skeletons. Uh, which is which is nice because um, so right now this looks like a direct upgrade to my current offhand the current offhand really the only thing going on with it is the plus two ray skeleton bonus to all pets which we also have on this new item here so um, the downside is I think as soon as I swap I think I'm not gonna have enough um, spirit anymore oh no this new item has plus five percent spirit as well oh yeah should we should be totally fine so um I'm gonna swap now Good. I'll keep the old one. Um, now, Summon Briar Thorn, Briar Thorn, sorry, is over here in the Shaman Tree. So I think as we get the next two levels, I'm going to invest in the base Shaman Tree. And then maybe around level 30, maybe 35, I don't know. I think I'll drop all the skeleton skills and reinvest fully into both the Blight Fiend and the Briar Thorn over here. Um, so we won't have the same swarm of enemies immediately. But um, we should have two very solid summons, um, and then we'll uh, potentially at that point start reinvesting into Skeleton again, just so we have some more random mobs. Or what we could do is we could invest in, say, Modrigan's pack, which is quite good, because um, it buffs you, but it also buffs all your pets. Um, actually, I don't know if Heart of the Wild is buffing our Toggle. Oh yeah, it's a blessing to you on your allies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's got the bonus to all pets line on the bonus on this one, but everything that the this d happens here happens to everyone in the aura around you. So it should also be buffing our pets constantly, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, I was like, I'm, hold on, am I am I on the crack? Because I'm pretty sure about this one. I mean, I've played another character with Shaman. Shaman Occultus is my is my Petra the Petromancer. Um, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have these maxed out, and I hope that wasn't a mistake. But yeah, yeah, we're all good there. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. But for now, we're going to keep going with a giant swarm of skeletons. Um, we've got a, a, a tougher Blight Fiend. We had started investing in uh, one point in Spectral Binding and then a bunch in the Spectral Wrath. But I realized I don't think Spectral Wrath is doing that much for us yet. So I decided to spec out of that and put more into Blight Fiend here, so he's kind of a tougher guy. Uh, we also have one point in Ravenous Earth here, mostly just so that uh, we have a good target for Shepherd's Call. If you might remember, actually... Oh, background sounds a little too loud. Let me drop it a little bit here. Um, you know what? I'll just bring down... Well, no, I want the voices to still be loud. So I'll bring down the music and the ambient sound effects a little bit. And then like that. Okay. Um... Oh, yeah, you may remember in our actual uh, devotion tree, the Shepherd's Call, well, it used to, before we bound it anything, actually, if I unbind it, it'll tell us it has a 25% chance on attack. When I bind it to Ravenous Earth, it's actually a 48% chance to attack, uh, to trigger on attack. The reason that is, is because, um, right here, Ravenous Earth has a 2.6 second cooldown. Because it has a cooldown, the percentage chance of triggering actually improves, which is really nice. So as I mentioned last stream, if you do have a, if you do attach a devotion skill to a skill that's got a cooldown, therefore you can't use it as often, it's okay because the percentage chance tends to improve over there. Now, I think it's quite nice on Ravenous Earth because Ravenous Earth actually causes a, like some chunks to come out of it. And I think each one of those chunks might be able to proc the Shepherd's Call by itself. So I think this has a really high chance of triggering Shepherd's Call, which, as you recall, gives a buff to all of our pets. Um, it's gotten all the way up to level four just from me running that dungeon a few times, and it's just going to keep getting better and better over time. So I think that's going to be really good. 
for us. Anyway, um, that's our setup. Oh, my skeletons are gone. Oh, because we changed some items around, so I'm gonna have to go and resummon them. That was really quiet, I think. Even here, the skeletons get summoned. Oh, there you go. It's just a really quiet sound. Now, for our main quest is actually to come over here. We have to repair the bridge leading out of town on the western side over here, and this is how we get into Act 2. I'm pretty sure we actually could have done this at any time when we had the um, the, the resources for it, which we've had for a while now. That's the thing. Grim Dawn is... It's... You can follow it linearly, which makes it really easy to not get confused and lost as a new player, but there's a bunch of non-linear content that can happen. That being said, there's probably not much point for us to do this early on, um, because this level here, this area here would have been too high level for us, and we didn't have any quests in this area. So we do have to repair that. Now we have to go across and kill Edmund Shanks Doyle. However, before we do that, we're just going to backtrack right over here, and this is something we could not have done earlier, is talk to this fellow, the Emissary. This ah, happened we after we last. killed the warden, so after As we completed... As I am sure you know, there are many who now cast their Thank gaze you, upon you, traveler. Or should I say, taken. Some who mean you ill. Some who fear your potential. Then, there are those who command me. They have taken great interest in your accomplishments. It appears you may be just the one we require. Alright. Um... After we killed Warden Krieg, which was the end of Act 1. The acts aren't really, like, defined in terms of journal and stuff like that, but they're pretty clear divides just thematically here. Um, this guy unlocks. This guy's related to the Forgotten Gods expansion. Uh, so if we say, I cannot uh -huh, speak. and then accept, what he does is it opens a portal over here. And if we jump through here, we get to the Forgotten Gods expansion content. Now, because of level scaling, you can do the Forgotten Gods content um, now, or you can wait until you finish the entire vanilla baseline campaign and done the ashes of malmouth campaign and then come back over here both ways totally fine like doesn't it doesn't matter it's got level scaling you can do whatever um and so if you're doing min maxi things some of your some of the builds are like ah, oh, you know what um as soon as you can get in here do the forgotten gods content right away because there's a monster and fragment that's really critical like that'll give you a huge buff thing and whatever in terms of um if it's your first time through and following the story uh you would do this last just in terms of kind of story progression and things but it is even if you're gonna wait to do the story last i love the, the sunset or sunrise lighting that's going on right now um even if you're gonna do it last you should still when so, it becomes available come in here the three go to this fella so there are three cults over here. We can also pick up some lore books uh, for some extra XP, which is nice. Um, there are three cults in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little trial here to prove to ourselves that we're worthy of joining in one of the cults. And it doesn't matter which of the three cults you're going to join. The emissary warned. Technically, they are different factions, um, and they will. You know if the combat sounds. Like that. Um, and uh, you know whichever one you join, you will gain reputation with. But ultimately, you're gonna join. You're gonna gain reputation with all three, no matter what happens. So you won't miss out on anything, no matter who you join. Um, so some might like offer some some uh, reputation vendor stuff that um, is more important to you. So you're gonna want it as early as possible. But um, ultimately, you'll be able to max them all out, and you'll be able to get every single reward in there. So you could just choose whichever is thematically stronger or whatever. But the big thing is, whichever one you join, you will immediately be um, I could catapulted hear the... to friendly with them. And because of that, you're going to be able to Come see what's access left some of their rares. Ways. So this uh, Saleil is one of the three cults. And this first tab here, you need friendly. Currently, we're just tolerated. But if we were to join the cult of Saleil, we'd be able to buy this. And all three... I'm very loud to a bit. Sound effects are a bit high. But Combat's it's... still too loud? Okay. So I'll bring down the master a little bit then. Okay. We'll bring it down a little bit more from about... Good use. 80 Come see what's 60%. left of my wares. Um, so yeah, each one of the three cults and their vendor at Friendly will offer you two emblems, and these are mobility skills. And it can be really nice to gain access to one of these. You actually add it to a metal. This is our metal over here. Um, and it gives you a new skill that gives you some sort of movement ability. Disengage jumps us backwards. You don't care about that. And charging forward rushes towards an enemy. Um, the ones that rush towards an enemy, you, you do have to click on an actual enemy. So there needs to be an enemy in view to use it, but they do tend to move you further. Some of them are direct teleports, which tend to have a shorter range, but are really useful. Um, so you can you can choose to align yourself with whatever cult maybe aligns with you more story-wise. You could look at um, what they sell like at the extreme deepest level and then choose to go with one of those. I don't want to go with Slail. Um, 
or yeah, or you could just look at the, the starter mobility things and be like, you know what? I just want this specific mobility item right away and the rest doesn't matter. Uh, Cult of Dreek. I think story-wise, I want to go with uh, Bismiel because a lot of the pet stuff has like the word Bismiel in it. So that's kind of where I'm thinking. Um, but Dreek offers us charge. So just like rush, you target an enemy and rush towards it. Uh, Rift Tear. This is great because it's a teleport. Uh, the direct teleport does have like slightly longer cooldown, slightly reduced range. So for pure distance mobility, the teleport is a little bit lower than some of the others, but it does have the advantage of like being able to like skip through terrain and stuff like that. Um, and then later on, you're going to get improved versions of all these. So again, you know, you know, pick pick whatever Tired. makes the most sense. Well, I think I'm going to go with Bismiel. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, See anything you like? Yeah, Wars of Bismiel here. Uh, the Vanish needs to jump forward. Leap is pretty useful. So Leap has, I think the teleport has a six second cooldown and goes 10 meters. The Leap has a five second cooldown and 14 meters. So to me, Leap is like, like sort of the teleport because you don't need an actual target um, to choose, but it's a little faster. So personally, I like I to grab the Leap early spent. on. In this case, it works out great because I think thematically, You've uh, been quite a sight like since fairly, entering our camp, my dear. Fit. So I'm just going to head. Then what I've heard is cult. true. Then I'm not going to accept any other quests just because I don't want them to make quests. See anything you like? But I'm going to go and buy, you know what? Just to save me a trip. I'm going to buy a couple of these. I can keep one in the bank. See you around. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing is do a pass around here and pick up all the lore books. I think there's going to be another one over here. This thing in the middle, by the way, uh, this is where you access the Shattered Realms, which is infinitely repeatable, in infinitely scalable endgame content. That's quite cool to do. And usually one of the tests of like how good your character build is, is how deep, I can't remember if there's a book over here. No, is how deep in the Shattered Realm you can go. I'm just gonna read all these lore books for a little bit of an XP injection. And then we're gonna go back to the main quest. Oh, and I'll remember to apply that and then I want to put I don't really use the pet attack that often. I think I'll put the leap on my one button. There. Leap. Perfect. I do want the NPC voices to be quite loud because it's rare that they come up and I wanted the story to be there, but maybe maybe I'll change my mind. We'll see. Anyway, back to Devil's Crossing. I do skip some of the I don't skip all of it, but yeah. Okay, all right, fine. People are just because Twitch is very single minded sometimes. Let's bring let's bring it all down a little bit more. Alright, there, done. I should just mute the game. That's how you normally play it. I just I just mute the game. Um because I'm usually watching something at the same time. I don't think the incendiary shoulder pads, that is another monster infrequent. I don't think that those are going to be something you personally care about. We'll take a look. So right over here is Edmund Shanks Doyle. So we got to kill him for a quest. Not, it's not a terribly hard fight anyway whatsoever. Right, so yeah, all I'm doing is dropping my ravenous earth. It doesn't do very much damage, but yeah, it can proc the, um, it can proc the shepherd's crook, which does give a fairly significant boost to my minions. So it's definitely worth trying to keep that up. Hey, level 25. After you kill Shanks, make sure to go and take his sash over here. Oh, we got a recipe for Venom Fang oil. All right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, yeah, so in terms of leveling, I think... Yeah, I'm going to max out my Blight Fiend. Which means I'll have to resummon him. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put one point in Rotting Fumes and then the base class. And then we might just keep sort of balancing those out here. So Rotting Fumes gives my minion just, he constantly just stinks around here. 2.5 meter radius, constantly poisoning things. Uh, impair, gives a chance to fumble and impaired aim, which is cool, reduces the defensive ability. And also the minion generates additional threat. Now, I still find that, I, I don't know how effective threat is necessarily in this game. It, it definitely feels like, um, It definitely feels like the enemies still kind of target whoever they want. Okay, I do have to report back to Mornay and Devil's Crossing, but I can just keep pushing forward here because 
Um, because the, the next thing will be to just push forward until you find someone else. So we're gonna do that. All right, this fellow here, Drew, he says his business partner tried to kill him. So we're gonna go right up here, follow these tracks. Choose his business partner of being a dirty, dirty, dirty murderer. It turns out there's maybe slightly more to the story. And you can choose which way you go with this. You can just be like, you know what? I'm not going to even listen to your story. I'm just going to kill you. That's fine. There's a few different ways. But as it turns out, the guy who claimed that Isaiah just tried to shank him because he was trying to steal all the money. And it turns out that the first guy we talked to was not a very nice fella. And uh, he deserved to get shanked. Just leave it at that. But you can go either way. I have for different characters. I, you know, role play my characters depending on what kind of character they are. Sometimes they just don't care. They're just like, I have an excuse to go and murder someone? Yeah, enough said. Threat feels pretty pointless. Yeah, and I, I think that's, I do feel that that's the case. I don't think that the threat on the minion really makes much of a difference. All right, rift here. And what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and go back to town. I mean, we can portal whenever we want, but. Now I'll talk to him, and what we're going to get is a follow-up to go and talk to the people in this town that we just ran into. Well, it's not really a town. Well, uh -huh. did you yeah, work Darius? Totally. Yep. We have uh -huh. to hit them mm -hmm. hard uh -huh. and fast. Cool. Okay. okay. So yeah, we got to speak to Quaid at the rover camp in Old Arcavia, which is where we are. And we also have to uh, find out what happened to Elsa. This guy just won't let it go. Um, Elsa, they got jumped by some bandits. And uh, I think he got... Get knocked out or something we can't do. Hey Quill, pay attention to the new subscriber. Like that. Talus Machine! Hey, thanks for the sub. Guy wants us to find an elder that has gone missing. And this one wants us to go and uh we're gonna start going up against some bandits. So the whole reason we're over here on the the west of um Devil's Crossing. So like we went east originally to deal with the, the problem of, like there's monsters spawning, there was this um um this warden that was uh, uh, causing issues and stuff, and we dealt with that. But then the problem is Devil's Crossing doesn't have enough food. So they have sent us west to go and try to connect with an, uh, another town called Homestead. And Homestead has massive farm capabilities. And so we're to go and try to clear a route towards Homestead and try to set up so that we can get some food deliveries for Devil's Crossing. And I believe the overall general plot and the problem is, whereas the western or the eastern side of the screen, like when we first left uh, Devil's Crossing, we were encountering tons of undead. That was the, the major thematic problem over there. Whereas on this west side, they are plagued by bandits. Also, I guess bugs is the other thing, which will become more and more relevant as we go. Now, what we're doing here is there is a bandit camp just outside of the rover camp we were just at, but we can't reach it because there's a huge wall, huge gate. And so we have to find some dynamite. And in this dungeon over here, there's always dynamite available. Also, there's always this guy here. Alpha's arm. He's getting there. There we are. Excellent. And, oh, one of the bandits actually happened to drop dynamite as well. So, dynamite was not available in Act 1, but as of Act 2 forward, you will find dynamite. Oh, you'll find a lot of it in Act 2 here in a lot of these mines and from some of the bandits. Um, don't forget the cave here with the Shrine for Devotion Point. Thank you very much for that. It's not this cave, it's another cave that we're going to run into, right? I think it would show up on my mini map. Yeah, I don't think it's this one. <laughs> um, yeah, but dynamite is used for all kinds of things. So you're going to be collecting lots of dynamite. You get this quest to pick up dynamite in the first place. Yeah, different cave, cave with the ghost. Thank you. Um, you get this quest to pick up dynamite here. It's sort of an intro to the concept. Same as we got a quest to pick up um, ethereal shards, and uh, that's where we're going to bring the dynamite. Ethereal shards and um, trap. Oh, that was my bug. Change my bug. Now, right over here. Oh, we're gonna do a totem. Yeah, let me just clear some space around here. I'm gonna want some room to work with to fight with this totem stuff. Right back. And actually, while I'm here, I guess we can talk to the elder. We found the elder. Unfortunately, Elder Matthias is dying, so he asked us to bring an amulet back to town, which we're um, totally just going to keep for ourselves. More on that in a bit. Right, tend to summon a couple of hero units. Very good rewards. I know, very well. But yeah, 
Always get a unique. Good chance of blueprints as well. I don't think the blueprints are guaranteed, but you're always guaranteed at least one unique. What we really want, um, there's an item that would be amazing for us. It's a ring called the Marrow Band. If we could get two of them, that would be the ideal. Um, and the reason for it is Marrow Band because you have, I believe, plus two to Skeleton and plus two to Briar Thorn. So it would be extremely useful for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, portal back to the rift here. So we can tell them that we found the dead elder, but he totally didn't have a, an amulet, a relic on him. No. But I found the elder. Nope, did not find the talisman. And the reason we're going to lie on the first, the we only ever do this on normal, is because it gives us our first useful relic. We didn't have anything in the slot. If you lie, you get to keep this relic. Um, uh, you're not going to do that on elite or ultimate because you're going to have, you're going to have crafted your own like character appropriate relics by then. But right now we didn't have that. The bone talisman gives us 5% to each one of our stats, which is lovely. It also gives a man infusion, which we could cast. Uh, I probably won't bother with it because I'm very lazy, but yeah, just 5% to all of our stats. Really, really handy. Um, so normally what you're going to want to do is tell the truth there just because you'll get um, uh, you'll get slightly more rep with the rovers if you tell the truth. Plus, you know, it's a nice thing to do. Uh, I'm going to go this way. Love this game. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Yeah, it's really tempting because you, you keep seeing other things you want to do, other things you want to try. There's so many different combinations available. Um, it is it is very rewarding to stick to the character and actually get to the end at some point. But I know, I have altitis in all games all the time. So we're going to go ahead and blow up this barrier with that dynamite. And we're going to keep coming through here. And beating up some more bandits. Oh, Alright, I can go back and speak to Quaid again now that that's happened. But we're just going to keep pushing through now. Because again, you don't need the quest in hand to be able to keep working on the quest in this game. So right over here, I think we'll be the bug dam. Now, we need to get... If we get to friendly with the rovers, they will give us a quest to bring a certain amount of... Um, what's it called? Like the royal venom or whatever? Oh, yeah. I picked some up. A royal jelly. I think he wants you to bring like three royal jelly and he'll give you a recipe. Um, but we do need to be friendly with them. Assuming I'm not getting confused, we have to be friendly with them before we get the quest. So if you do need extra royal jelly, you can easily pick some up on here, but it's a total optional side area. So I don't think I'm gonna do it. Cause I, I don't think, so there's a so there's a little, a little mini boss in there that can drop a monster in treatment, but I don't think we need that one. So I'm just gonna clear this area here cause there was a little hero unit right there. Some bonus XP. Agree with the title. Big D2 fan years ago, Grim Dawn was the only RPG that felt real successor of the gameplay style. Yeah, I mean, for a long time, I was like all aboard the Path of Exile train, but it started to feel too much like work. But that, I mean, that's very personal, right? And then I, I didn't play Grim Dawn for so long, and now I'm kicking myself. I could have put 2,000 hours into this bad boy. Instead, I only have uh, five or 600 hours, you know? Such a missed opportunity. Oh, we got a Ruin Shrine here. We can get another Ruin Point. Thank you very much. Um, where are we going next? Because we finished the Shepherd's Crook. We just searched for Pet. So, I mean, Panther gives at every step some pet bonuses, which is nice. The Hound does as well, mostly health boosts. I mean, we could still go with Jackal which would also give us our total speed here for movement, which is nice. I think we're mostly gonna wanna be pushing uh, south a lot here. Do we just go toad? Because if the pets can regenerate health, that might be handy. Plus completing toad will give us both purple and green. Oh, I just realized I have to unspec this, um, this point here to get an extra point as well. Wolverine. Hang on a sec. I had some notes. And then there's just, maybe I should be focusing on things that keep me alive. I guess it depends on where we're going, sort of like in, in the end game. 
because you want to kind of work towards a path. But again, don't stress too much. It's easy to despec. So if I'm like, I change my mind about things. It's not the end of the world. Some. Unless it leads to something, maybe. Yeah, um... So I get the eel, it'll give me five blue, which I could use to unlock panther if I decided to do that. Just give me some base stats. I don't like that it doesn't give me defensive bonuses, though. Even though it does boost the pets a lot, it doesn't give me any defense, personally. Is Staff of Ratosh something we're gonna go for? a lot of pet damage. It's a lot of just generic pet damage. That's actually kind of tempting. Yeah, I have to say, the devotion system is the only one that is kind of overwhelming for new players. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume we're going to go to Staff of Atot. I'll probably, I'll probably respec and change my mind completely later. But for now, just to have a general idea, let's pretend we may be going towards the Staff of Ratosh. So we're going to need purple, yellow, and blue affinity. Panther does give us yellow and blue. The eel gives us blue. I think I'm just going to assume we might just go for the eel because of there's so many great resistances and move speed on here. I'm going to I'm going to put a point in here. Next time we're in town, I'm going to respec out of this crossroads as well to free up some more points. And then we'll just we'll just finish up eel and we'll see how we go from there. Yeah, there are good stuff to plan out devotions. Um, there's actually a great tool for, let's say you specifically know, like you look at the, the end game. So the, the end devotions are all the ones on the outside. They're very expensive, generally speaking. Like the obelisk of men here here needs eight yellow and 15 blue. So there's a great tool you can punch in the name of, or you don't, you don't click it, you click the name of like wherever you're trying to go, okay? Um, you put that in and it'll calculate a path for you. You can click more and more constellations that you want and it'll figure out a route to get there. Because part of it is sometimes you spend points, at the very least, these little starter ones. <clears throat> and then once we have, like right now, I have six purple, which means I don't need this purple point anymore. So I want to respec out of it. And then when we complete eel, we'll have five blue. Well, we'll have a total of six, but I can uh, respec out of this one and it'll still leave me with five. So eel becomes self-sustaining. So, um, and then later on, maybe we need the blue from the eel to unlock, say... Um, again, if we were looking at just the obelisk, which I don't think is something we're interested in. I'm just using an example, which needs 15 blue. But at some point, we might be able to get it and then respec out of stuff that was giving us blue or or whatever. So there's there are useful tools to help you find those paths. Do So here's another town, Old Arcovia over here. We get the waypoint. Um, I still have to... Yeah, hold on. I'm going to turn in the quest to over here. After we cleared the, the way, we've done that. Barricade. Done, done, done. And we get another loot pouch. So it's nice to turn that one in. I mean, you want to turn them all in for XP and rep and stuff, but. Boop, 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 boop. From Nomad Path It's That's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, I feel like, yes, Path Exile does have, like, one of the strongest Keep sort of like infinite end game kind of vibes, which is really good. Um, and so if you want something where you can like really go like hard mode, work hard kind of thing, but for my, for me and my time and, and stuff, and even my money is um, is grimmed on, even though Path of Exile is free, but you're still gonna wanna buy the books. All right, so now we have to destroy some bandit forges. We still have to discover Elsa's fate. We have to kill Darius Cronley, which is sort of our, the star here, these are like, that's the major, um, sort of plot. Everything else is kind of a side quest, but what's great about the troll rampage is it's literally just outside of town right over here. Right over here, and you don't even have to turn it in. Go, minions, go. It's just a troll, just chilling over here. He means level 30 right now. There you go. Turns in, get some rep, that's great. Let's go over to the east here. Even though we don't have any quests pointing us towards the east, the shepherd's close even though we don't have any quests going over here. So we do have to start there, but those forges aren't really reachable from here. There's some funky stuff to do over in this side of things. Okay, Grim Dawn completes 25 bucks. Yeah, because right now the base game for Grim Dawn is 25% off. All the expansions are 40% off. 
You can get the complete edition. You can get the complete edition right now for cheaper than it, like than getting a handful of basic stash tabs in Path of Exile. All right, so this town here is being plagued by bandits. They want some money. Um, we will help. They don't want to leave their town. They just want these bandits dealt with. She's just asking us to deliver payment to Silas over here. So there's a few things we can do. We can kill him. Um, and because we're like, well, that will totally solve the problem, right? The problem is, I don't know if I should spoil it, but it does. it is kind of interesting that, again, it doesn't matter, right? You're not going to screw yourself one way or another, but there are, there's like personal role-playing meetings that go on here. So we can just pay them the scrap that the town adds just to pay for it. And that'll be fine. But they're, you know, they're still going to be around. They're still going to ask for payment next time. We can kill them. In which case, the townspeople actually aren't as happy as you might expect because they assume retribution is going to come um, from the rest of the bandit group. And indeed, that is something that's going to happen later. You're going to find that they did go and murder everyone in town, kidnap some of the children, which you free later, and then bring back the Devil's Crossing to that one lady who's already got a couple of orphans that she's taken care of. She's going to take care of more of these children. Is, is that a good outcome in the end? Well, no, a lot of people, innocent people still died. The other thing you can do is you can go with this option. How much coin would it take you to make you leave like forever? There you go. We can just give them 2,500 bits. And they say they're going to like, yeah, he says he's going to tell Darius this place ain't worth the trouble anymore because we're going to line Silas's pocket personally. And he's going to lie on a Herbie, our behalf. Presumably, maybe. So I'll, I'll pay the extra money. All right, you better be gone when I return. And this does make the people the absolute happiest because in theory, they, they totally have promised to not come back. We can totally trust bandits. Well, it, it helps. As long as they don't come back for a little while, it's okay, because we're about to murder all of them. So it's going to work out fine, probably, maybe. Um, I'm going to put two more points in Rotting Fumes and then keep leveling up the main class over here. At some point, I think we're going to want to invest in all the points for the Blight Fiend, other than Unstable and Awful. So we can chat with more people, get more story over here if we want. <laughs> and if we have extra dynamite, and we do, we actually got lucky enough to get a second dynamite drop. So we've already got this. Sometimes you don't have your dynamite right away, so you gotta come back later. We can jump into this area here. And there's plenty of times when I'm going through like leveling a new character, I don't even bother like coming through this area. Like, hold on, I just wanna burn through the main quest as quickly as possible and call that done. I just wanna to get to the higher difficulties. When my inventory gets full is when I'm going to take a look at it. So this does give us a back way into a dungeon that like, we can enter a different way as well. But yeah, we'll just jump in here. Well, there goes 1256. Two copies of Grim Dawn. Future fun with the wife. He's not another. Oh yeah, and someone did mention um, if you've got uh, whether or not you have expansions installed or not um, splits up the multiplayer. Like, um, if someone has just the base game, they can only play with people the base game. But if you do buy the expansions in Steam, you can just, like, toggle them off in Steam. You right-click, go to Properties, DLC, you just turn off the expansion so that you can play with your friends that only have the base version, for example. And it's totally fine to, to start with just the base version. You won't have all the classes. You won't have all nine classes. There'll be six classes, which still gives you... Six times five is 30 different class combination possibilities, which is pretty good. The thing I really appreciate with Poe, the doing way to play the whole game three times each difficulty. I mean, they did have that for a while. I remember when there was only like, what, four, four acts in Path of Exile? So you did have to repeat a lot. I think this is the other entrance to the mine we could have come in from. Yeah, just outside of here. Now, this is an optional route. There's two ways to get to Darius Cronley. Uh, I'm going to go through this way because there's some named people to kill. Uh, we don't have uh, all my pets. Oh, because I leveled up my pet, so I think I, um, I lost it. I forgot about that. Oh, and for actual proper, like, full-on pets, you can even choose their, um, their aggro range. I like to set them to aggressive so they leash out as quickly as possible, as far as possible. But I didn't mind repeating the difficulties of games. Like, if the if the campaign is fun... And here's the thing. So, there's a lot of people who play Path of Exile who wish that when you make an alt, you could skip the campaign. Um, so, I actually... 
I think the fact that like people are happy that you don't have to replay the main campaign in Path of Exile for the, on the three different difficulties, I think it's more of a sign of the weakness of the campaign more than, oh, that's super awesome because of whatever. I think if the campaign is good and interesting, replaying it is doesn't feel bad. So, totally secret area over here, not on the minimap. That's one of the things I do like a lot about Grim Dawn. And we've already we've already missed so many side secret things. Um, some of which I, I know about, but miss because it's something we have to come back to at higher level. Some of it I just forget because there's so much of it. Quill's not live. Thank you, Twitch, for timely notifications. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. Some people want me to like, talk about times and confusion. They're like, well, I mean, if you're just subscribed, you'll get notifications, right? It'll be fine. And you're like, is it though? Which not great with that. Maybe one of the 400 people they laid off this week um, could have actually improved the uh, notification system. I don't know. I mean, and they already switched the um, the creator, you know, the creator payout percentages got changed so that we're getting less money from, from Twitch. So, like, do you think they could have used any of that to improve their infrastructure? That would have been nice. Now, we could have backtracked. After getting through this um, this dungeon, we could have backtracked to the left um, a little bit more uh, to where, how else, because you can enter this camp without going through the, the cave system we just did. And so we could have backtracked to kind of see that area. There's a, a little optional sort of mini boss fight that you could do over there, but I don't think they've done anything, I don't think they drop anything that they care about for this particular character. Um, there's also some forges there, but there's lots of forges. There's, we have to kill three. There's more than three. I can tell my minions to kill them as well, but I'm like, oh, okay. we'll just let them keep doing that. Hey, you know, the recipe. Nice. Uh, the game is nice. It won't drop a recipe that you already know. It is theoretically possible. I've never seen it happen. It is theoretically possible for two copies of the same recipe to drop kind of simultaneously because it only checks to see if you've known it. But there's so many recipes that it's I've never seen it happen. Um, so generally speaking, if a recipe drops, it's always for something you have. Just grand. Oh, minions. There we go. So that's the last forge. And then we're going to go into the dungeon over here. So, we're uh, now entering Cronley's hideout. We don't actually have the quest for it because we have to, um, the quest to destroy the forges, which is disarming the enemy, um, it has a follow-up. It's to kill Moneybags Martin. Um, there's three places you can spawn in this dungeon. Um, I think I did accidentally miss him once, which is pretty crazy because all three spawn spots are basically right on the path you're gonna be walking. I think one of them is kind of up here on this side, and I think that might be the place where I missed him one time. Actually, there he is. I think I might have just act, like skirted around or just rushed through this area and uh, not noticed him. Because usually he's uh, deeper in the cave. Well, usually. The two of the other spots are deeper in the cave. And so I just kept assuming that he would always be there. Is it in this cave that we also meet uh, Dereni again? So. Maybe it's another one. Man, my skeletons are not lasting. That's one of the reasons I do. I am I can be eager about uh, switching to the other two pets um, again in the short term. We will be returning to skeletons, but in the short term, con um, um, committing more to the blight fiend and the briar thorn. So we're gonna come down here because there is a devotion shrine. A little bit of area around the, um, the totem, not to be confused with the devotion shrine. Go minions, go. It's okay, everything's dying. Alright, good. Marauders on the boat it is a set piece, which I don't care about. We got another blueprint for a ranger's helm, which I don't think is something we care about crafting. And we'll learn it to take it out of the pool. Yeah, we're gonna have to make a trip to town soon. Oh, I better learn the hoarfrost um, ointment as well. Skelly boys need to focus on calcium rich diet for durable bones. Yeah, we don't have that many items. I mean, we, we might have a bunch in our bag right now. As I say, we don't have that many items that are boosting our pets yet. So, yeah, they're still a little on the squishy side. 
Thanos of Arcovia starts a side quest. Okay. Go and turn that into someone. Yeah, bring it to Amka. Basically impossible to miss because you basically always, it's always there. Come on. Actually, I don't know why I'm bothering with the Tarch. Because for my offhands, I'm really always going to, it's going to be a caster offhand all the time. Well, I mean, conceivably, I wonder if there's a monster in frequent shield that I might care about. I think mostly it's going to be caster offhands that are likely to have more of the things I'm interested in, but I guess we'll leave it there. Mostly sign all the YouTube viewer occasionally pops by Twitch. Watch the VODs. Don't miss the notifications. Yeah. Wish they were better for people who watch live. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Usually if you're on Twitch, you'll see a little pop up. But, you know, you have to be on Twitch and looking at the screen. And it, like, doesn't, like, from Twitch's point of view, it shouldn't help them. All it's doing is moving viewers from one channel to another. They really should make sure their email notifications or whatever are working properly. Because it's like, hey, you're not currently on Twitch. You should totally be on Twitch watching our commercials. And also maybe streamers. So all we're doing here is basically just pushing east. Trying to get... Oh, more dynamite. Lovely. And it is Dorenny. So Dorenny, if you may recall, was the person who was in the camp in Devil's Crossing. Um, and we found that piece of paper that implied that they were an evil, evil cultist. And then when we approached them, we're like, no, it's a huge misunderstanding. It's cool. I promise I'm not that way anymore. Here, have a key to like a secret cultist lair and everything. So we let him live. Um, turns out... Still went back. Dorenny, I trusted you. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Either way, we end up fighting him over here. Um, the only way you don't fight Dorenny here is I believe if you killed him in town, then he just won't be here. So, ooh, my mom is still here. So it really is quite a lot better to like leave him alive because then you get to fight him as a proper boss over here. But who knows what kind of evil, nasty things. Oh yeah, he was responsible for like poisoning the, the well as well. Well as well. One of the missions that we did in there. And he killed Sparky, too. Wait, no, that was Agatha. Which is way more deep and intricate than imagine. feel like I've never heard anything you are talking about. Oh, oh, yeah. You, like, you, there's so much in this game. Um, it's one of those things, too, you don't necessarily notice. You don't recognize um, some of the different decisions that can come up in the game when you're just playing a lot. Because, you know, things just sort of happen. You're like, well, that's the way it is, right? And it's like, like, no, actually, there's like a bunch of little things. They, they, but... And maybe, I mean, it would probably be more known or more discussed if they were like things were like, oh, make sure you take option B because it's really important. Otherwise, you screwed yourself out of something important. Like, no, no, none of these things are important. None of these things will break your character. But they do have a bit of an impact on the story. And yeah, from a story role playing point of view, they can have huge impacts. Especially the, how you deal with the, uh, the one town that's being exported. From a story point of view, oh, some of those things really hurt. But none of them, like, break your character. So if you don't care about that aspect of it, then you don't have to stress about those decisions. You just click some buttons and then keep on killing. Cyberpunk uh, 2077 got a lot of criticism in a lot of ways that were very reserved and very legitimate. Um, a large part of the technical criticism was about old gen systems, although there are still some glitches even on high end PCs and da 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 da. But one of the criticisms that it got is a lot of people said, well, your choices don't matter. It's not branching the stories. And it's like, you just didn't realize how many of the side quests had like multiple different ways to deal with it and how many of those things show up and have an impact later. Partially because the game doesn't scream at you of like, hey, remember when you made this specific decision later? You don't get a pop up that says, you know, um, uh, so and so will remember this. Hazer face will remember this. You don't get any of those pop ups. So it can be kind of subtle. I'm not saying 20, Cyberpunk 2077 didn't deserve plenty of criticism, but some of the criticism was maybe not the most you know, most representative of situations. Cyberpunk had some hard-hitting quests, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do a guide series on YouTube? I mean, maybe. Let's see. Anyway, we're gonna fight um, Cronley over here. This is actually interesting. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't jump on us right away. 
he, he gets to do a little bit of a, like villain, villain monologuing at us if we want. There he is. So bourbon. So he's been infested by bourbon. magic space demons. Up trying right? to that's the sort of Christmas you see in the green you. glowing eyes. That's very humanity. We we were basically one of those. We were taking power is rising. Anyway, uh, so we're just getting. But there's a bunch of dialogue you can go through again. But all along, I'm just like, no, no, you just die. Uh, minions are dying like crazy. I think uh, he's doing a lot of, um, I think that's Aether damage. The the Aether and uh, one of the other damage types looks a little similar. I think one's more blue and one's more green. Between the, I guess between the Vitality and the Aether damage, I think. Not a die. I think when I see them like side by side, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's totally obvious which one that is. But I don't think my minions don't have much weight resistance yet. I think, yeah, when he's got that shield around him, he's indestructible. So maybe just focus our efforts on something else. There you go. He didn't even have a phase two. Ah. Yep, and Darius did not have Elsa, which we had thought we had. It's also a little, uh, not the most secret of areas, but a little bit of a secret area over here after you kill him. We get some extra notes. Again, you can right-click on all these notes. Great lore, you can read all these on the wiki. Um, but, uh, I just care about Ferxby at this point. Over here, there's no reason not to keep some extra notes. So what we're gonna do with that. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, he's got a chest over here. Isn't it for the Rune Father? Not for us. And yeah, we are pretty full. Even the auto sort system's not really gonna save us much room here. Yeah, no, the carbine's gonna odd shape. Yeah, we'll have to make the trip to to, uh, to town soon. Um, these cages over here. So this is if you um if you take the path of like killing those bandits that are extorting those uh, villagers. This is where you uh, you find the uh, the kids. Um, you know, I'm gonna put a necromancer and then one point rotting cubes. And then, yeah, I have to resummon my minion. I have a secret mini game playing Tetris if you should use the auto sort. Yeah. Bo -bo 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 -bo. Go, minions, go! This character doesn't really care about mobility. If I replace my metal, I might not even concern myself too much about re-putting my leap on it. Well, I guess I still have a pocket currently. So probably have to save some space. Okay, we're just trying to get out the other side here. Drop out of this cave entrance. We're gonna hit a waypoint, then we'll go back to town. We got some quests to turn in, and we'll get rid of this loot. We'll also check to see if it's in uh, decent shape. Go minions, go! Let's uh, go back to Devil's Crossing first. All right, come see what's left of my wares. Lunch I can't wear, partially because we have to go see here. I, I'm loath to lose anything that gives us a pet bonus, but some of these defenses are a lot higher. See you around. Uh, okay, well, I don't have the spirit, so I'm not gonna wear it anyway. Uh, we might be able to shuffle some things around to get a bit more spirit, but overall I'm going to assume I'm not going to do that. I'm considering putting a few points in spirit, just because a lot of the items we're going to want to wear are going to be caster-oriented, and a lot of those have a high spirit requirement. So it might be worth putting a few in, just so that we can equip ourselves a little bit easier. Um, note of that, we don't use Raging Tempest personally, so we're not going to do this. Um, all this gives me is Acid and Poison. This gives me Pierce only... Quite a bit more armor and more health. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to these boots. These are my old ones over here, right? No. Did right clicking sell the boots? Put it to good use. Um, Grimdown's a little inconsistent with some of the things. Like when you're looking at your stash, if you shift click, then it puts it in your stash, and I kinda work shift wish shift click was also the cell command and it was kind of unified there. Um, Last Epoch has it consistent that it's always shift right click is always to like 
take something from your inventory and put it over here, whether that's selling it or stashing it, but it's always consistent. Grimdon doesn't have that. If you're looking at your stash and you right click on an item, it equips it. If you're looking at a vendor and you right click on an item, it sells it. I don't like that. Um, We don't need to cast fireballs. You got no real resist. No, I can get sold. These boots have Aether Resistance, which I don't have any of right now. But it doesn't really have anything else going on, so no. Chaos Resist. I mean, the so the damage on the bottom row here is less common, but at the same time, it's also a lot less common to get Resistance on them. So it is kind of important to pick them up. 10% Chaos Resist. I'd lose the Physical Resistance. I'd gain a bunch of armor. I would gain more health. I'd lose the pet bonuses. I kind of think it might be worth throwing this Helm on, though. Overall, I think it's going to be better for survivability. Again, we are playing, um, we are playing hardcore here. So if we die, character's just gone. I'd rather not have that happen. No. I'm going to start just just because it's fun. That's a good amount of resistances. Because that's all three elemental resistance plus aether resistance. Versus Vitality and Bleeding. Oh, and Cold and Fire. Now, I don't need the Acid to Poison Damage. I don't need the Offensive Ability for my current piece. I don't need the Lightning Damage, but Physique is nice because that's more Health and Defensive Ability. I think this chest piece here is overall better for our defenses, so I'm going to switch. Uh, these Incendiary Shoulder Pads, so they, uh, they drop off a lot of the... Arsonist or Demolitionist or whatever they're called, the Bandits ones here. They're great if you are playing the... I can't remember what the base class is called. Is it called Demolitionist for the, the player themselves? Um, lots of fire damage, but that's not going to be for us. Um, of Command does get bonuses to all pets. The Elemental Resist. Summon Hellhound doesn't help us. Do you actually want to wear this helmet? Slightly armor, more armor, which is something. Okay, the helmet we're currently wearing that we just equipped has basically what it's giving us is health and chaos resistance. Yeah, no, we're going to switch to the crown to command. More overall resistances, and it's got the pet, pet bonuses. There you go. Sell that. I'm not actually really using it. I mean, I do have Ravenous Earth, but I'm not really using it, and we're not ever going to have this cunning to use that gun. In fact, I should probably just take the guns out of the list of things I'm looting, just because it's unlikely we're going to be able to use them. Spirit for this. So all I'm comparing here really is the resistances. And the movement speed, the physique... I think I'm going to keep my existing uh, pants, especially since I did put ancient plate armor component on there. It's a little harder to come by. So I'm going to keep my current pants. Triple resist. We already have triple resist. Our current boots have the 4% health and more armor. I think I'll, I'll keep those item that we don't care about, but that is cool. Same thing with the boots. Uh, and that ring. I might just bank them, even though. I don't know. In case I decide to not do a solo self-found hardcore character. Maybe. I don't know. gunsling your way through the game when your hellfire bullets shoot chain lightning oh yeah no the demolitionist my first character ever in this which uh we did as a stream some of which is on youtube it's like six years ago or something like that um with you know chat kind of teaching me how to play the game was a um was a inquisitor so purifier demolitionist yeah um and it was excellent fun yeah we did process the second bag as well so i'll sell you as well Oh, hold on. This both have the Pierce and Poison resistance, although this is more, and it has elemental resist, and it has 41 health on it. Oh, we're switching to this this metal. Much better. 
Mine well spent. Okay, let me put the uh, augment on this one. Got something you need stashed? I'll keep an eye on these. Excellent. Yeah, that is much better. Oh, and let's bank all these blue items, just, just to say. Safe storage. No questions asked. See, no shift left click to do this. I hate that, that inconsistency, but it's a little Oh, you gotta be sold. Request that I'm keeping you. No, the Sister's Amulet of Life-Giving is still better for us right now. Safe with me. That's the one for we got quite early on from Killing Milton. It's like a guaranteed drop, and it is a it is a really nice um, amulet that'll keep you going for a while. All right, good stuff. Around. So we need to report to Mornay over here. Well, the wolf deck now that. Go and then we are going to talk to Barney in town. Yeah, this is the we need food. Yeah, I guess at first the quest line is. You know, kill some bandits, go see if you can Hello, rescue friend. Elsa. Right but then here me. it's like, yeah, we okay. don't have enough food. And this is when you get told, yeah, get all the way to um, to Homestead, if you can. Uh, we got a couple of quests to turn in at the other camps we meet, met along the way. Playing RPG, spending 15 minutes organizing inventory, name a better duo. Yep. At least, uh, oh, I guess it's not at this camp at all. It's only at the other camp. We um, at least there is a pretty decent loot filtering system in this game. It was the best loot filter of any ARPG until um, until Last Epoch, which has much better. Crazy. I destroyed the forges. You got. You, we need me to kill someone. I've already killed them. Cool. We get to complete the quest. Hey, you, I found this book. Excellent. Wonderful. Lovely. Hey, you, what do you want? Oh, you want me to find you some royal jelly? Well, I have a bunch of royal jelly. Cool. Thank you for that. And you gave me a recipe as well for the Royal Jelly Bomb, um, which I already know. I, I must have learned it randomly. Oh, maybe I haven't completely cleaned out my hardcore file. I might, it, maybe you can get it as a, ro a random drop, or maybe I played another ra hardcore character at this point, because uh, recipes you learned are shared on your your whole like account. I mean, you don't have an account, but your whole your whole your whole copy of the game. It is divided, your softcore character and your hardcore characters are separate. But yeah, if you learn a recipe on one hardcore character, it's available on all your hardcore characters, for example. That might've happened. Anyway, uh, now we're, the only thing we've got left is the we need food quest. We gotta get to Homestead. Uh, we could try to cross the bridge, except, um, spoiler alert, the bridge is broken, so we can't go that way. We can go, so. Yeah, I'm mostly gonna do some running here. If my minions kill stuff, great. I'm gonna try to keep an eye behind me if um, I happen to uh, drop a piece of loot. But we will stop here and kill this totem since my minions have finished clearing up the area. Level up some more. I'm wondering, instead of working our up to Blight Blast first, maybe what we do Maybe what I do is I think I still go and max out Rotting Fumes, but then maybe when we finish Rotting Fumes, we go and invest all our points in the Shaman and then get the Briar Thorn in here. And then when we get to the Briar Thorn, despec out of Skeletons and just have the Blight Fiend in that. Yep. I think I like that. And what's great is there's going to be so little micro because those things won't die at all compared to the Skeletons. Skeletons do great damage for us right now, though. There is that. I mean, damn, they're obliterating. Well, actually, I don't know what's doing the most damage in our group currently. Spellfire wand, not for us. These pants, not for us. One of the things is there is so much build diversity in this game that most of the items you're going to find aren't going to be for your specific character because, like, there's so many different ways you can build your character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't think Rodney? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I, uh, maybe I just start investing in the shaman immediately. I'll leave it here. I won't undo the rotting fumes. But yeah, maybe we'll we'll just put a halt in there. Took a slightly longer path than I needed to here. Because sometimes there's a totem there, but we already found the totem. All right, so we got a dude here and his ghost friend. Oops, no, no, I want, I want to be part of this. There you go. So we have to kill three dead dudes in a place that we're going anyway. 
So that's a no-brainer request. We definitely want to say yes to that. Shrine those runes. Did I skip a... Uh, a the, you just mean the shrine here, yeah. Now, if you do end up skipping a shrine, if you find a shrine, I didn't actually click it. Because you can see the shrines in the world and you get these little check marks. So we know that there's a shrine here I didn't do yet. Um, but I think you do have to have, like, sort of at least seen or been part of the zone. Um, there's a great tool. So there's a fantastic website called Grim Tools. Uh, dot com. Hold on. That is what it's called, right? Grim. Yeah, GrimTools.com. Uh, they also have uh, LastEpochTools.com. Um, wonderful sites. Great for, like, planning out your character builds, looking up items and things like that. Um, but there's also a great tool on there where you can upgrade, upload your character and get a checklist of um, if you've completed all the key quests, the ones that give you like skill points and stat points, and also a list of all the shrines you've completed or uh, not completed. Uh, so you can use that um, very quickly to find things. Like, oh, I was supposed to um, despec a point next time, uh, last time I was in town. You know what, let's do that now, otherwise I'm just gonna keep forgetting. Um, let's go to Devil's Crossing. Yeah, here. GrimTools.com. I'll just drop a link. There you go. And then LastEpochTools.com. And yeah, you can zoom in. Things look great. Like the skeleton models and things are fantastic, but obviously I want Let maximum vision here. So in my devotions, so to respec a one of your passive talent points, you just spend a little bit of money. The price goes up the more you do, but it's not very significant. Anyway, I'm going to refund one just base mastery coin over here. That many. There you go. Because I only need that many to get here. Um, you know what? Maybe I will bring it down to just one. Maybe we will clear up a lot of points. Now, devotions are basically the same, but it also does cost you aether crystals to do it. So it's microscopically more expensive, but not an issue. And uh, it'll tell you if you can't do it. Like, I can't do these because it's later, or um, it won't let you do it if you need the point to be able to afford something down the road. But yeah. I have lots of the purple, so I can now get rid of this crossroads here, bring me down to five purple. And now that means I have two devotion, or three devotion points, actually. One that I just undid, and apparently a couple more to spend. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and put points in eel. Defensive ability, ability to avoid some attacks. There we go, complete eel. So now I'm up to a total of six blue, which means actually, immediately, I can despec out of this, get that point back. And we could start looking at whatever else we might do. And I, I don't know what it's gonna do. Part of me is just wondering if I do go into the Hound. The retaliation doesn't matter, actually. Maybe I don't do that. It's good for health and stuff, but. Mm. I mean, Sailor's Guide is always good, sort of generically. I could just point some points in there and then figure things out later. But yeah, there's, it's hard to argue with Sailor's Guide, just kind of in general, especially as kind of an in-between-y thing. Oh, let's talk about going up Panther. It is pure offensive. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, well, how much more do I need here? Oh, quite a bit. Panther gives me yellow, which I do need some yellow. Oh, I need, yeah, okay, tell you what, I'll go yellow and then we'll start on Panther and we'll complete that. We might undo it later, but just, I don't want to um, spend too long considering the builds. I wonder if it's worth going and getting a point in Modrigan's pack immediately. I think it is. We'll just get the one. That's all right. And then, yeah, we'll put a point into... Oh, I run out of points, so I guess I won't do that. What I often like to do for my toggles is I actually go to my second toolbar and put my toggles on there. there go. A little bit of an aura for my minions. Groovy. Yeah, I was using the search bar for pets. Probably answered some of those. Yeah. All right, so we're back here. We have to go in dungeon over here now. The way to get it, because the maps, the maps are fixed, but they have randomized blockers. Oh, I have to read some of my, uh, like, there we go. They have randomized blockers. You can't always get to it from every side. It looks like it's open on this side right now. minions go murder death kill this was actually i could have just dropped the skeletons as i was saying and then i'd have tons for the uh the thorn. I keep the 
skeletons for like one more little bit, and then we'll switch out of it. I was talking about maybe putting some points in the spirit. Although, because I just added a bunch to the base shaman class, my spirit number is better. All right, so we have a few things to do in here. First of all, and actually, that's something technically you can start on the surface if you get lucky. We're going to get... We don't have a quest for it right now. Secret areas everywhere. Um, is we're looking for a little, like, lectern with purple glows. As soon as we do one, we're going to get a, a lost fragment or something. It's going to start a quest to find um, three or five total lost fragments. And then at that point, they'll show up on the minimap. But you have to do it at least once for it to start showing up. Yeah, sometimes they give you explicit quest for givers, and sometimes they're subtle about the quests. We want to explore. And again, a lot of, especially these, these dungeons like this, a lot of secret areas, which I don't have memorized, unfortunately. There's some cool ones, too, where it's like, pull a torch. We're looking for one of those, but we want it to glow. Like, pull a torch to open a secret wall. Really rewards the exploration. And then reading all the lore for it. It's so good. I don't know if we're going to finish Act 2 in one stream. We finished Act 1 in a one two-hour stream. If I, uh, if I accelerate here, then maybe. That's good. This is one of the first three people we have to kill, or the uh, the guy and his ghost friend. Scars. I'll let my minions do that while I just loot. It's like playing multiplayer. I just have minions all the time. I mean, sometimes I call those minions my friends, but, you know, we all know what kind of relationship we have. Oh, we'll be coming through here later. There's a lectern I think I can click. I thought, I thought it glowed purple, but apparently it's just sort of a smoky glow. A new skeleton. I'll re-get my light beam too. There you go. Forgotten passives. That's what it's called. So we do that. Now we have a quest to collect three of them. Two more. And they will show up as maps on the star. Uh, as stars on the end. Uh, and there's, like, there's lots of those lecterns in here. Like, if you miss a couple, there's, it's okay. There's going to be, like, seven. As long as you make sure to click at least one to start. Do, 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 do. The Ravenous Earth, like, distance is not very impressive. And I think it does get, like, kind of blocked by walls a lot. So I was trying to drop one in the middle of these guys. So we're going to do, there's a star marker over here. We're going to go outside. I'm going to take this door. And then it gets very confusing because you leave here and then there's still a star marking behind you. And I remember the first time getting a little confused. But we're going to talk to this lady who apparently has a had a daughter who got turned into a harpy or something. We're going to have to go kill it. But what we're doing is we're running out here just to grab this waypoint. Because that'll be just convenient to have. And then we're going to go back in. Mm -hmm. Don't you have icons show menu health and UI? So not our skeletons because the skeletons... So there's a couple of different like classes of minions in the game. And the skeletons are just sort of like, they're too basic, too common. Uh, there might be a way to have it over their heads, if that's what you're asking. Um, I believe, yeah, pet health bars. Yeah. Now, I find that a little too crowded for my skeletons. I don't really care that much. But maybe I should have it. Um, for my more real minions, um, they show up over here. So I can watch my uh, Blight Fiend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we're coming back down here. And again, that star is a little confusing. It's because we have multiple quests going in multiple directions. But what we want to do is we want to keep lingering down here because two things. One, we want to find the other two forgotten passages. And two, we need to find two more dudes to kill. Lotto and Vagra. So as, as, all we have to do now is like not take that exit and then just keep going down here and eventually we'll complete it. Secret area, just a wall for us to smash. Do love that it auto picks up components. So at release, that wasn't the case. It didn't auto pick up components. And as a direct su spiritual successor to um, Titan Quest, components actually needed to collect five pieces of them for them to um, merge into one and be useful. And eventually, they got rid of that. They got at auto pick up because it used to be uh, you. There's um sort of a mod. It's kind of actually kind of an external tool um, called Grim Internal, and you. It was like. If you find old threads about Grim Dawn, you'll see it recommended as one of the things. No, every player, ne you need Grim Internals. And I believe the reason for it is, is it auto picked up. Comp I mean, it did a few things. Um, it gave you a little on screen DPS clocks and things like that, which are still handy. Um, but one of the things it did, it auto picked up components for you so you didn't have to click on them. But that's part of the base game now, so it's less critical. Like Grim Internals. 
To me, I think the rainbow filter is required and actually should be the sort of thing in the game. There we go. We've just completed all them rittings. There goes a recipe for lifestealer oil. A little bit more lore over here. Great stuff. Now all we're down here is to kill two more named undeads. path here, but it's fine. Still good on minions? Yep, good. I think I'll be happy if I don't have to babysit my um, my skeletons. In the long run, um, well, in the long run, if I were to play this super long and farm up, like, a lot of people here, what I'd end up with is um, a build by uh, Maya GD, who is the queen, I think queen, of, um, of pet builds for Grim Dawn. If you ever have a question on the Last Epoch uh, forum or Reddit, uh, and you ask anything about pet builds, someone just, like, summons Maya GD. Because, yeah, she knows all, she's got everything. Anyway, she's got one called Ishtar, which is a, which is a ritualist build. And we might look into that in the future. It's based on um, heavily utilizing uh, Reap Spirit here, which is interesting because it's you're, you're very much a pet build, but you play almost a little bit more like a caster because what you're doing is you're constantly spamming Reap Spirit and what it does is it summons wraiths. Um, and yeah, which is kind of neat. And I've never used it, so I'm quite curious to see how it goes. Still level 29. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest points in my uh, Briarthorn. You notice it's in blue here, and the reason is I have something equipped that's giving me pluses to the skill. But unless I have at least one point in here, it doesn't count. So now I put one point in here, and it's currently giving me level 3, which is great. Put some more in here, and... Um, yeah, hang on, let me just check some things. That, one second, just having out and checking some things. Do, do, do. Technical issues. All right, distractions passed. Uh, I should reorganize a bunch of this. I really don't have to resummon my big pets very often. So I think I'm gonna move my Blight Fiend here and I'm gonna put my Briar Thorn over there. There we go. We'll put you on aggro mode as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pet attack here. So one to leap, two to pet attack, and then the skeletons here, because I still have to spam them quite a bit. All right, so we got another pet. Now, um, the Barthorn is great. He's only, with only five ranks, might still be a little on the squishy side, but should still be a helpful addition. And yeah, I think what I might do the next time we're in town is respect out of my skeletons just use those two, those two big, big people. They should be pretty effective. Pet attack sounds like you aggressively pet someone's head. <laughs> um, before I do the totem, I'm just going to go and clear this spot here. Especially since there's another name in the yep. Give yourself some room to operate. See, what I like about the leap is, um, especially for a character where I'm not, like, I'm not running into melee anyone, so I'm often, more often than not, I'm going to use the leap to get out of a pack. Two copies of Spectral Monster. Not for us. It does give plus two to one of our, the skills that we have as a class, but... Uh, did all my shit die? Oh my god. Busy looking at the loot, didn't realize that everyone died. If I do get rid of the skeletons, I might actually turn on the um, um, the pet bars just for my two main pets here. Spectral War Shield. Drain Essence, yeah, it's one of our skills, but not one of our skills, if you know what I mean. Gonna pop the little bub bubbles over here. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Out. I need more skeletons still. Drop some ravenous earths in there. Just generally keep me out of trouble. As these guys keep dying. Skeletons are still on cooldown. Cooldown is up. I might want to resummon my other pets, actually, just on the basis that their hit points are getting low. My build currently is a little non-interactive with the enemies. But you know what? Good way to stay alive. Oh, my skeletons keep dying. Here. 
feel like I was having a hard time uh, line of sighting to drop my um, ravenous earth. All right. Handful of blues. I think what I might do is I'm going to change my load filter here. Honestly, at this point, while I want a lot of resistances and I would like defensive ability, really, I'm kind of starting to only care. Only I'm only going to want to equip items that give me a pet bonus or give me stats in my masteries. I want those items to also have resistances, but I think I'm just going to be very strict with my filter here. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. Should maybe just put my uh, skeleton summon key on a on an auto cast now. So that's um. So by that I mean I, I kind of want to just keep mashing the skeleton key so that whenever the cooldown comes up, we resummon three more. Um, that's something you can sort of do in well, kind of sort of in all games. There's a trick you can do where if these things are bound to um, numpad keys. So, like, the number... The, if I hit three on the numpad right now, it doesn't work. Because they are they are different yacht keys. But I think if I go key binding, quick slot key three... Yeah, I don't use the camera to zoom out. I use it on my mouse wheel. There we go. So, number three, now cast that. So, if I hit three on my numpad... There you go, cast skeletons. There's a fun trick you can do. If I hold down three, and then toggle off numlock, when I release three... The computer doesn't register it as me releasing numlock key three. So from the computer's point of view, the three key on my numlock is still being held down, which means in theory, there you go. It's resummoning my skeletons every time the skeleton comes up, which is only relevant to skills that you want to use on every single cooldown. Um, and then if you ever want to just like stop it, you can just like toggle your, your numlock or hit the key again. I guess you hit the key again. If unlock's on, it's still casting it because it still hasn't registered a release on the three. But I can just tap three right now. There you go. Now it stops auto-casting. Um, you can also just use a third-party tool to, to click that button. But yeah, that works in basically all games. It's not relevant in most games, but it's very handy for something like this. In particular, um, I really love to, to have on auto-cast my um, pneumatic burst if I've got Nightblade or... Um, What's the occultist's heal spell that's so good? It's Drieg something. Um, and basically, it's like, you want to you want to cast it every eight seconds. Every time the cooldown's up, you want to mash that button. So you're like, you, a blood of Drieg, thank you. So it's like, you either use an auto hotkey script to just like repeatedly smash it for you, or you just do the little numb lock trick, which doesn't even need an external tool, uh, which is really handy dandy. And yeah, you can use that. There you go, that's my gift to you. You can use it in Diablo, Path of Exile, um, Lost Epoch, all those games. It's not even a third-party tool, so even if there's, like, strict user rules, although some some things will have rules about not using third-party tools, but they, they're really only caring about botting, um, so they don't come after you for hotkey, auto hotkey, so you can just use that. I don't think it'll work on a Mac, because, um... Max don't really have a numlock. Which is actually something that I always appreciated. When I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft, in WoW, numlock was the run key. And way back in the day, my primary desktop was a Mac desktop. Um, and it was great, because you could tap numlock to do the auto run. And that was all good. But... Um, but it, it, it wasn't really a numlock key. It's something else in that position, the same position. I think it might be or something. I don't remember what it is. But it's in the same key as numlock on a regular like, PC keyboard. Um, so yeah, you could still use it just fine. But on PC, after a hard day's work of playing World of Warcraft, then you go and you want to type in a number somewhere and use the numpad. You have no way of knowing if the numpad uh, is in numlock state or not. So there's like, I always get frustrated after playing a game where numlock does something. Because then after I try to like punch in numbers, I hate the like RNG of whether or not the number is gonna work. 
Such a stupid small thing, but it's there. But anyway, I think that means on the Mac you can't do the numlock. Yeah, I don't like. It's too bad you can't change the leash range on your skeletons. Like you can for the other pets. I'm gonna go through here, and we'll leave one more zone for us to clear. Oh no, we already did. We already killed the last name, dude. Oh, I guess we did. I didn't even notice. Scars is done. Okay. Oh right, this just warps us back to the outside, or not the outside. This warps us back to a place in a dungeon we've already been. I thought. Who's the name, dude? Oh, it's the dude! He's not part of a quest. He's the guy who guards the shrine. That's what it is. I'm like, no, no, there's one more guy for us to kill. Yeah, I forgot he's not part of the quest chain. Go back to the shrine there? Wait, did I miss one? There's a shrine coming up. Are you... I don't see a shrine on the minimap. There's a shrine coming up. Yeah, you just mean that shrine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the only mod I, mod I use is uh, the rainbow loot. Which, in my opinion, should be in the base game. So there's a shrine here, but we can't actually activate it until this boss is currently locked, right? Sealed by a powerful presence. We gotta kill this dude. I think he should be hard for us. And everything is a little scarier because we are playing uh, hardcore mode. But we paid attention to our resistances. We have decent health. He is shredding our pets. I really should have my uh, skeletons on the uh, auto cast right here, so I don't think they can sit. Because every time I look down to check my skeleton count, that's a moment where I'm not watching the screen, like the main screen. I could be like sitting in something toxic. All right. Oops. I know. Done. Uh, da, 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 da. See, we'll go down Panther. I'm not. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but it's something for now. We can always respec out of it later. Like, th don't stress. Also, don't make the mistake of looking up um, endgame builds and trying to build to that. A lot of the endgame builds are built around the idea that you have like a certain set of equipment as well. So here we can just walk out over here to there, but we can just save ourselves some time because we previously went and activated this waypoint. There you go. This is the exit there where we talk to the ghost lady who wants us to kill her daughter. She's turned to turn into a weird harpy. Not this one. Yeah, that fight is no joke. Like, a lot of these fights, again, when you're playing in hardcore mode, if the fights don't look trivially easy, that's bad. Because you don't want to come close to dying in hardcore mode. Because even if there's only a 1% chance that you'll die, you know in a fighting this game that eventually that 1% chance equals actual death. The lesson I keep trying to teach myself when I'm playing, um, like action, like true roguelikes, like Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I'm like, yeah, I'll probably win this fight. And yes, most of the time that is true. And every now and again, it's not, and your whole run goes away. And even then, that fight was, did not look trivially easy, which I did not like. Probably should spend more time uh, farming a bit. Now, again, I couldn't, I can't just farm for XP to out-level my uh, opponents because there's a certain amount of level scaling that occurs. Um, but generally speaking, you do actually outscale things, even though they do level up with you, again, within a certain range. There's a minimum and a maximum for each zone. Um, you know what? I will do the numlock trick. So I'm going to hold down three, toggle off numlock, release three. There you go. So now my skeletons are going to cast it. Two paths we can take. Not hidden exactly because it's on the minimap, but it's not truly obvious right away. Every time the skeleton cooldown comes up. It's nice, because I can focus just more on mobility, staying out of trouble.
So we didn't really have to go this path. There's a lot of ways to get through the Broken Hills. Which kind of gives me a bit of a Thousand Needles vibe from uh, World of Warcraft. To bring up WoW a second time this year. Although a Thousand Needles is like radically different these days. Is it like full of water now? Hey, we leveled up, level 30. Um, yeah, let me put more points in summon. We need to cup in that guy. Still a thousand needles, yeah. Oh, uh, there is a little path here. One extra chest. Now, what's crazy is there's a super secret quest chain as well um, that involves going to four different zones, finding a completely secret area off the zone, killing a specific dude. So here's the guy who wanted us to kill the three undead in the dungeon. Um, now he's going to ask us to go down to in here, which we could do now. I'm not going to. Um, what it does is that leads us, it's a um, breadcrumb to the first roguelike dungeon in the game. Uh, so what happens, we'd clear our way down there, and then there would be a gate. We talked to the ghost guy there again, and he would give us a skeleton key. Skeleton keys are used to access these roguelike dungeons. They're called roguelike. They're referred to in, by the community as these roguelike dungeons because um, there's no way to waypoint in and out of them. So when you start one, which does require a skeleton key, which they are rarer drops, but you can also grab them. So they're not, you don't want to necessarily throw them away, but they're not super mega hard to come by or anything. Um, you use one of your keys. The gate opens for a limited time and then you walk in. Um, but then, yeah, you can't you can't t teleport out. You also can't teleport back in. So if you die doing that dungeon, then you have to start the whole thing over again um, because you actually you can't open the door a second time without like quitting out the main menu. Quit out the main menu, reset the door. So if you want to get to the end of it, you have to do it, which is quite exciting. Of course, everything we're doing in this run is, you know, roguelike in terms of the permanent aspect. So that means, so what's nice about those dungeons is that even on a regular, you know, softcore character, um, without permadeath, you still get to experience the, that tension of a quasi-permadeath situation by virtue of, of those dungeons. Just Tiffany. So yeah, I am taking a very convoluted path through here, partially to farm a little bit of X, uh, XP as we push forward, partially so I can just talk about the rope. And, I mean, it let us turn in one step of our quest for that guy. So that was still okay. That's kind of dangerous for hardcore characters. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go into the roguelike dungeon uh, currently because it is, like, very difficult. Um, but there is uh, some really good loot that you can farm in those things. Yeah, just the, the regular content is going to be hard enough. So, here is Luro the Abandoned. This is the uh, daughter of that ghost lady. She turned into her, herself into some sort of monster at some point. Killing her. We'll go and turn to quest in a bit. Let's clear some area around this totem. Uh, this is the one thing, so the expansions are mostly self-contained. Well, uh, the expansions add extra classes. Um, Ashes of Malmoth and Forgotten Gods, one adds one class, one adds two classes. I don't remember which does which. Um, and the extra classes are quite fun, but not necessary for your first character at all, right? Unless, unless you specifically want to play one of those classes, you don't need those expansions. The only thing is that the, I think it's Forgotten Gods, it does add these shrines to the whole world, and they're quite cool. Again, not required. If you're not sure, you know, if you're going to be into the game, just get the base copy. Especially with it being 75% off right now. It's like five bucks. Um, but the expansions are generally pretty good. Lots of great content. Lots of really new, interesting epics, like unique items and stuff. A lot of them, admittedly, are made for the new classes that didn't have items before. But not for the old classes as well. Especially since there are, you can mix it up. Am I not auto-casting my skeletons anymore? I might have tabbed out in and out of the game at some point. Nope, I guess not. A bunch of blue 
items. That's interesting. So these Swamp Dwellers leggings are actually designed for the specific combo of classes because Modrigan's Pact is for my Shaman and Spectral Binding is from my Necromancer. I don't currently have any points in Spectral Binding. I did, but I don't right now. So it wouldn't do there. It would boost my Pact, which is nice. A lot of resistances and some base stats. It's also pretty good on armor. I think I'm just going to throw these Swamp Dweller leggings on. Yeah. This chest piece, no. Dead Beater. Plus two to raise skeleton, which we may be specking out of soon, I don't know. But, I, you know what? I, when I saw that drop, like, part of my brain was like, hold on, you should check that, and I forgot about it. Um, huge bonuses to all pets. Because the current item has bonuses to all pets, but it's actually not that relevant. I think we want to switch to Dead Beater. Ravager's Bard Barb also has a bunch of pet bonuses and gives them resistances. It's plus two to Undead Legion, which is my skeleton stuff. Is that better for us? I actually feel like it might be. Um, the plus two Legion, Undead Legion isn't going to be enough to give us an extra skeleton, because right? I think it's every third point we get one. It's more overall damage. It doesn't boost vitality, but most of our pets don't do vitality damage anyway. And it's got health. I think I will switch the Ravager's Bard, mostly because the, the health. I like that. Guardsman Spalders. They are good. They're not really for us specifically, but it is a decent set. Crushing Wills for Arcanists. Oh, Blight Shard. Gives me a pet. You think that beater's better? It might be. Oh, the attack speed. I forgot about the 4% attack speed. That's a good point. And the plus two ray skeleton is considerably more useful than the plus two to end dead legion. I did like the resistance on the pet, but you know what? Maybe we'll go dead beater. But yeah, blight shard amulet. If we throw this on, we can now summon a blighted scourge, who is a perma pet. Acid spit for piercing and acid. We don't have any, like, we're not really um, working on any specific type based bonuses right now, so we don't really care what kind of damages our pets are doing. Yeah, that's really good. So. Wildcaller is sorter of for us. It's plus four to primal strike, which is a shaman ability. Uh, and it's an awesome shaman ability, just not one we're using. All right. Okay. That's all pretty good. Get up this way, yeah. Oh, I gotta resummon my skeletons. Right. Because the skill points for them changed. They end up getting reset. Uh, hold three, untoggle, numb lock, release three. There you go. You're auto casting. Lovely. All right. Let's cleanse that shrine. So if I go over here, oh, I thought it'd be spamming three, but I guess not. Uh, I'll just keep putting points in Panther again. I'm not sure if that's where we want to go, but that's what we'll do. Well, that did actually reset that. Maybe it only does it one time. Hmm, I don't know. Oh yeah, we have a maximum of eight skeletons now instead of nine, but that's okay. Theoretically, they're a little tougher. We're just gonna follow these wagon tracks for now. Level 76 Shaman, all resistant at 87. Here's Elsa. Your back. Turns out she's totally fine. She's an absolute badass who just murdered all the bandits and everything. Like, it's not a problem at all. So that's that mystery solved. We can let it go. Make that joke a second time. How can you not? We're just aggressively following these tracks now. I don't think there's anything particularly important on this map. I don't know if there's any secret side areas. I think so. I'm trying to remember, but I'm kind of hoping to see if we can um, uh, reach, and I think we will. We only get 21 minutes, but if I hurry, I think we might be able to reach Homestead by the end of the stream. And by the end of the stream, I mean at um, four. There's a little item there. At four, which is in 21 minutes, I'm going to be switching over and joining a Kiss for Luck on her stream, and we're going to be playing Last Epoch. So the action RPG continues this week, and I will be playing 
another necromancer with the exact same name, making my own friends, on there so we can compare and contrast. All right, we got ourselves a rift. Going through Smuggler's Pass. It's all because that bridge was out. So we're having to go through here. Yeah, that green terrain over there, horrendous amounts of, um, of ethereal damage on that. That stacks. The longer you stand on it, I think the faster you take the damage as well. How much RPG do you want, Quill? Yes, exactly. I've always loved the Desert Um Again, I was a little late to the party for Diablo 1. Um, technically, well, technically I watched a friend play Diablo 1 before Diablo 2 came out. I actually hadn't played it myself, but I had watched a friend play Diablo 1. But when D2 came out, I was like first in line that. I was in university, and I was lucky enough to... Uh, I have a good friend of mine who I'd, I'd made uh, in year two of university, I'd made friends uh, with Demonac. Shows up on stream sometimes and things. Um, anyway, we played through uh, Diablo 2 together. I'm trying to remember, he went through as a necromancer. And in those days, the necromancer really didn't scale that well. That was before they added all the skin, skill synergy and patch. Was it 1.12 or 1.13 for Diablo 2? That added all the skill synergy. This dude here, uh, Voldrak the Destroyer, can drop a great mon um, monster and frequent for. Soldier? These trolls also drop um, good items for soldiers as well, so I might be getting confused with that. Like if you like plus four to force wave or something. Force wave is a great skill. You can just get through the entire game as a soldier. There we go. Well, Drax Crusher, we did get it to drop. Oh, this one's for. So Deadly Mimitim, Heart of Wild, and big boost to Cadence as well. Um, I think those are from three different classes. I'm not sure. Heart of the Wild is from Shaman. Um, it also boosts more Mog Dragon's pack. So, like, this covers so many crazy use cases. It also massive increase the DPS if I were to ever hit anything, which I don't. So, um, yeah. I guess I just realized my left click was still bound to attack, which is wrong. Because um, I was going to say, hold on. It shouldn't be showing me increase the DPS. It would on the auto attack. But now if I do this, it actually will show me the improvement to DPS to my um, Ravenous Earth now which this would actually be decreased. Yeah, so I don't I don't need this in any way, but there's some there's some great stuff in here depending on what character. I guess I actually picked it up. Which, I mean, we could sell it. Maybe I will. I've not tried Wolkin. I don't think it's in a horrible horrible state right now cuz it was it was poor for a little while, right? Things have been not great with it. I can't remember what the deal was. The other one I also haven't played is... Is it Lost Ark? Mostly because it sounds really good, but apparently there's quite a um, a wall in... If I'm remembering the name wrong. Right, Lost Ark. There's a wall at some point you really need to, like, get into grips. Because it's like an ARPG that's got kind of some MMO-ish elements. But, like, you kind of need to, like, party up with people at some point to do, like, bigger dungeons and, like, raid-type content and things. And, like, man... You can't, you can't force me to be social. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Vulcan 1 being a good game. Like, at some point, I'll, I'll, I should probably check it out. Just because there might be some interesting ideas in it that I'm like, oh, can we, you know, can we get that and something else? Um, we never found Ulgrim in Act 1. Taken. It um, I know but it comes you could have found him in Act 1, brought him to Devil's Crossing. And then here, right now, he's escorting a group of refugees trying to get to Homestead, but things are bad. Like, everything is gooped up with um, Aether Gunk over there. The Ethereals, those are the um, the magic space demons, the ones that possess me. So we're going to go down a slightly alternate path over here, and we're going to be using the powers we have left over from the fact that we were infested by a magic space demon at some point to be able to open the way wayports or rift gates i guess they're called so as soon as we've um opened up the homestead rift gate we'll be able to come back here and then help these people get the homestead finally we've got um so one thing we've got to do is get through mountain deeps here but while we're here we did get a side quest to find someone um they are they are deceased this area is very maze like again the maps themselves aren't randomly generated but all the blockers are uh we got really lucky that we got one of the closest spawns for the quest for the star Sometimes you make your way through Mountain Pass and you, like, never, never find the quest. Like, um, the quest is actually to poke a body here. There's always a boss by the quest. Apex. But Apex isn't actually... 
minions. Part of me is like, I could be putting all these on autocast as well. Sometimes they get autocast when they're fine, but it means I really wouldn't have to babysit the minions at all. If I just set up an auto hotkey script to constantly spam like three, five, six, seven over here, just resummon them whenever the cooldown is up, I might use some unnecessary mana, but I really could just focus entirely on not standing in goop. So notice we could walk away here. It's very hard to see the body, I find, but there is still a star outstanding. So we got to click the body, confirm that it did, and that's that. We do have a shrine to do here, so we'll do that. Just to make sure there's nothing. Sometimes things pop out of the ground. Just going to make sure we're not going to accidentally rock it, walk into the bad guys. Yeah, the energy regen might be too low for that right now, for the constant recast. What I could do is I could set up an auto hotkey that's bound to a button. So I hit that button and then it, it resummons all of them as sort of an emergency. Oh my God, all my minions just died to AP kind of thing. Generally speaking, like as we invest more gear, our minions are gonna become like more and more unkillable because one of the big priorities for our minions, like we want to increase their damage, but spoiler alert, minions don't do damage when they're dead. So one of the big things we're gonna be looking for is, um, is uh, increasing their health. Jump out of that. Drop some Earths into there. Quite close for the Ravnish. Uh, oh, there we go. We got a recipe. These turns, turn, this belt here. Homebrew potion. Drink deep and feel all better. Huh. An ointment. Yeah, these consumables. There are consumables in this game, and they can be very powerful. We've got a handful of them sitting in our inventory here. Uh, Royal Jelly Bomb, the, the Elixir of Aether. And the duration on some of these is really long. Some of them are 30 seconds, but some of them are like multiple minutes um, over here. And some of them are good for resistances and other defenses. So they're quite good, especially if you're doing the hardcore stuff and if you're trying to advance through content very quickly. Um, yeah, let me just keep putting points into Briarthorn directly, just especially since it increases its health. Let's just try to max that out just to get it to be as sturdy as possible. So now we are done with this dungeon. We just want to try to leave. There's, oh, actually right here. There's an extra little pack you can click that, um, is it not that one? Oh, there it is. There you go. That's got an extra little like lore piece for you. You want to make sure to collect all the lore. Easy to miss that one. There's actually more than one route through this uh, mountain as well. We just got really lucky where everything spawned that we didn't really have to go out of the way. That's gonna be something for us. That's interesting. I don't really care what my Ravenous Earth is doing right now. It would boost my actual damage from this, but it doesn't actually give us any spell benefit or pet benefits, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm really going all in on making my pets the only source of damage currently. Devotion Shepherd's Call is must have for your build. Is it? Oh, it must be great that I do have it on my Ravenous Earth right now. Yeah, I agree. So Ravenous Call, or I'm sorry, Shepherd's Call is a devotion. So the devotion system over here, some of these give you passive buffs. Some of you, get, some of them give you skills. None of the devotion skills, as far as I know, are skills you cast directly. Instead, you attach them to an existing skill. Of yours, and then when you use your skill, the devotion skill fires or has a chance to fire. Different things work in different ways. Some of them can be attached to just like sort of passive skills like auras and things like that. Um, others have to be attached to active abilities. This is one that has to be on an active ability. And so Shepherd's Call, when I hit someone with my Ravenous Earth, and again, I think Ravenous Earth can hit like, I think all these projectiles can hit with it. So it has a really good chance of firing off and it gives a huge buff to all my pets. So I'm casting Ravenous Earth. My Ravenous Earth itself does no damage that matters at all. Completely irrelevant, but it routinely buffs my pets and makes them kill machines. <laughs> Later on, depending on where we go, we might be very involved in our own task. Yeah. But, you know, so what I'm going to do, in Prospector's Trail over here, I'm going to push to the east to unlock an area, but I don't know if we're going to clear that area right now. I'm just going to get the waypoint, and I'll probably do it later, because I'm still hoping to get to... I guess we're basically at instead. Oh, I went the wrong way, but the broken bridge, you can actually repair the broken bridge over here. Um, you need to, yeah, clear the avalanche first. Uh, wait, or, hold on. Is this the area I'm trying to go to? Oh, 
this is the Pine Barrens. Never mind. This is where I wanted to go. There is a place here. The broken bridge that we had to take this long trip to get around. You can repair it from the other side. It's not really important. Oh yeah, this zone, Pine Barrens here is excellent. And I'm getting obliterated here because I jumped next to a couple of hero units. That's not the way you play the game, Quill. Yeah, we want to do Pine Barrens. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here, get the waypoint for it. And then we're going to continue towards, um, so I can say, technically I've completed active this stream. I don't know. Kind of like, part of me is like, you know what I can do? I can just stream 13 and five. See if we can beat the game on this hardcore character. I mean, less YouTube recordings. Oh, bridge repairs on the other end of this zone. Okay. So, let's get to the waypoint. Anyway, I'll grab the, the quest here so that I remember that they're in my log. Yep, what do you need? Yep, mm -hmm. you need some venom and stuff. It's, it's actually a great area. But... I'll back to the Prospector's Rift Trail. The zone we were just in. And instead of going east and then south to get to the Pine Barrens, we're just going to push north. And this will work out pretty nicely timing-wise. Again, while the uh, Grim Dawn is about to end, the last epoch part of the sort of combo stream today is about to start. I'll be on a Kiss for Lux channel, and I'll still be playing a Necromancer. I'll take this moment and put up my ARPG ranking deck in the top left corner of the stream. Containing my information about the RPGs I've the most experience with. I have played through Torch. I think I beat Torchlight One. I played a bunch of Torchlight Two. Uh, I'm trying to think of other RPGs. Well, Titan Quest, which is sort of like the the precursor, the technical precursor to Grim Dawn. Love the setting in Titan Quest, but it's a little bit more game. Um, still worth playing, especially since again you can usually pick that up for like five bucks. Like you can pick up like the legendary all DLC included edition. For like five bucks. It is pretty solid. Uh, you ever play Sacred 1 or 2? No. I don't believe I did. Sometimes I forget that I've played a game, but I don't think I've played that one. We're coming up on home said here. We've got to clear the uh, the rift, which is currently overrun by Ethereals. Yeah, those are the ultimate demons. This green blob is another uh, port. Rift gate or whatever. Teleporter to the um, Forgotten Gods expansion content. So I'm going to poke that at the start of the stream here, just to get our movement ability. Thing anyway, basically trying to spam my uh, Ravenous Earth. There you go, you're cleared. So this, what I can do now, is we go back to Dead Man's Gulch. It can be quite confusing. You can forget that you have to go back to Dead Man's Gulch. And then you're in um, Homestead, and you can't advance the plot for some reason. Well, the reason is you've got to tell these guys to come with you. So we're going to tell him here, we found your sister, she's dead, I'm sorry. We're going to so talk to and say we... we can open a rift gate. There you go, they'll go there. Weirdly enough, I don't rift gate myself instantly at the same time. So if we go back to Homestead, all the people are there, ready to advance. Things. That's basically, again, in the quest log um, over here, the, the quests aren't divided by acts, but that's... Basically, we've just finished Act 2. We're about to start Act 3. These Tons are... of quests we can pick up here. Yeah. So they haven't. So remember, the reason we were sent to Homestead was because Devil's Crossing has got a massive food shortage, and Homestead have tons of farms. And then you get here, and they're like, oh yeah, all the farms are um, overrun by horrendous insects. I wasn't and, sure. And uh, we can't to check. farm anything. Everything is terrible. Um, so yeah, we, we can't do that. Um, so that's that's kind of the next step we have to do. The other thing is, we get introduced to there being a couple I'll of different skip factions the pleasant here. The Legion is split on two So the Black fights. Legion wants to... We're going to get the option of having the Black Legion side with one of two factions shortly. Except that one faction is a faction of necromancers. And the other faction is a faction of evil people. I mean, from my point of view, the Jedi are the bad ones, right? 
No, but seriously though, the Necromancer faction is probably the more reasonable group of people. Um, and the other one are cultists to a god that, you know, theoretically is good, but they're kind of jerky in their own way. In any case, it literally doesn't matter my character, because if you are a Necromancer, you're literally not allowed to join that faction. So normally you get a choice. This character does not get a choice. It's the only way that you actually get denied that faction choice is if one of your two classes is Necromancer. They simply refuse to even consider working with me. Also, they're accidentally going to um, raise an Eldritch Horror and the, like demolish the world and consume everything. And they're the faction that, yeah, they, they did things wrong. But, you know, other than that, they're, they're, they're fine. We're going to dump some more components over here. Oh, oh, we got five minutes to this. spare. What I want to save you guys from uh, watching me manage um, loot. So what I'm going to do... Bring me back any blueprints you let's find. very quickly run to Pine Barrens. And let's see about slaying the first set of things for Pine Barrens here. We gotta get a Venom Sack and we've gotta kill a particular Manticore in this zone over here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you can intentionally not select the second mastery. Heck, you can intentionally not ever select a first mastery. Oh, that's a good question. I guess you could join them before you accept your necromancer class. Uh, the problem is on uh, when you get to elite difficulty and then ultimate difficulty, um, you're also sort of going to have to make the uh, the choice of factions. And so in there, you know, I think you'd be forced to change factions if you did that. But there are some people um, that... Um, There are some people who do a really crazy challenge where they literally go class them, which is possible because you can get so many abilities cast from items. Um, I can't even jump here. I guess it was still on cooldown. Uh, you can get so many abilities that are just cast from items. You can have your whole build go without picking a class. And it's technically possible. I've never attempted it, and I think... I don't think you can do it in a solo set. Well, I'm sure some people have probably done it. Um, really, I, th I would like to think you really are doing it with tanked equipment, but I'm betting there's some people crazy enough. Oh, we're lucky enough to get the poison leg immediately. These other stars here, we actually don't need to kill those. Those are all... Let's just say I can't pick it up. Wow. Sometimes you have to go and kill every single one of those before you find one that finally drops the gland. And the first two drop it for us. Okay. It's like the opposite of MMO, where you feel like... You've killed a hundred trolls, and you've only got a single troll eye out of all that, and you need twelve. Like, why are, Why do these trolls not have eyes? I didn't know I was in the land of blind trolls. What the heck? We're still hanging around here because there is a, like, like matriarch of these men. The feeling that our minions are not very poison resistant. And that's what's contributing to them having a bad time here. Logara, Prime Matrix, we gotta kill you. Now, normally what I would be doing from here is I would continue east and um, open a waypoint a little closer to where we're trying to go uh, to save time and walking, but for now, I'm just gonna do this, turn that on. And what we're gonna do is we are going to be raiding Kiss for Lux channel and joining her for some boss go, here's your Venom, and then you'll give me a follow-up quest. Here, I kill Sagara, and you'll give me a follow-up quest as well. And yeah, more levels, which I think I'm going to go and uh, keep putting in Briarthorn here to make sure it's as tanky as possible. Boom, bam. Yeah. I don't think we got anything along the way that was going to be another... Well, I'm going to have to check all these green items. Especially with the way I've got the filter right now, the only items that are showing are things that are giving me skills to my class, although maybe not a skill I actually use, or things with a pet bonus, which is going to be quite enticing, so... Admittedly, that's a pretty strict filter. Probably way more strict than makes sense. That's interesting. The total speed might actually benefit or generate more DPS for my pets. But I really don't need more poison and acid resistance because I'm 
Yeah, I'm actually 11 over the cap right now. I've got 91% poison acid resistance, but 80 is the, uh, the normal cap. And I do want the elemental stuff, so. Yeah. All right. Mm -doo -doo -doo. So I'm going to drop out of here, load up a last epoch, and uh, hopefully most of you follow us over to a Kiss for Luck stream where we are going to kill more baddies with skeletons. At least I am. Some, some people have decided to take classes that don't involve summoning a bunch of skeletons. I don't know why you would do that, but that's what has happened. We're going to confirm, confirm the raid works, and then I'll see you over there. Bye, everyone.